Hi. This is our presentation on world building, five elements to keep in mind. Basically a generic overview. I know we're going to be diving into desert rising a little bit, but we also have a presentation after us that will go more in detail. But we're focusing on the writing aspects and they're going to be looking at different books that encompass these aspects. So here we go. Alright, so the first thing that we wanted to focus on is actually building a physical world that your story is going to take place in. So that includes the geography or terrain, the weather, um, and also whether the story is taking place in cities, towns, a more rural area, or another planet altogether besides Earth. So the book that we chose to focus on for this aspect um, is Aragon. It's the first book in the Inheritance series. So in Aragon, it's set in a nation called Allegatia, but within that nation, there's desert areas, mountains, forests, cities, towns, all kinds of things. And they all play an important and different role in the story that's going on. So our next aspect is basically rules and rationale. What, like basically making your setting believable. So you, now you know what your setting looks like, it's time to develop the rules. If it differs from our universe, if it's like its own universe, does magic exist, are dragons the norm, etc. <laughs> so we chose to focus on Harry Potter. So it's basically set in a way in our universe, but they kind of isolate themselves off where magic does exist in the background. And it's kind of that idea of making sure that magic is kind of relatively the norm, that magic is possible, and making sure that the readers know that magic is the thing. <laughs> All right, so our third idea or rule um, is history of the place. So if the plot right now has elements that have happened in the past leading up to it that are important, you need to make those known to the reader. Um, sometimes that could mean beginning your story off with some background. It could mean that background appears in little bits throughout the story when it becomes relevant. Or you might never put that history in and it's just known to you as the writer, but it's still important in helping you develop your overall world. Um, so for this concept, we decided to focus on Game of Thrones. Now, in Game of Thrones, there is a lot going on at all times, and it really helps when they give you the background behind the events that are happening. So, you need to know about the wars that have caused the current state of affairs, or you need to know who's died, or um, who's overthrown who. And so, all those characters and all of their histories are really important to the overall story. Okay. So, our next aspect is culture. So you have the place, you have the rules and the rationale, you have a history set, now it's time to populate this world. What's a story without characters, and what's a character without like this unique background? So, do your characters have particular, particular religious beliefs? Are there multiple species in this world? Are they ruled by monarchy, diplomacy? Do some hunt while others farm or work in shops? How important is family? So to kind of look at this, we decided on using Lord of the Rings. So at first glance, it's pretty obvious that there's different like species here at work. You have the elves, dwarves, and I believe they consider wizards some kind of species of their own. But I guess looking at Tolkien, he likes to say that culture does not create language. The culture stems from the language. So in a way, he like says he came up, created these languages, languages in this story, and he thereby went on to make culture from it. And it's kind of interesting because you have the dwarves who are like this distinct mining, mountainish culture, very rugged, who are kind of afraid that their culture is dying off. Then you have the elves who are very like, I guess, established in like their unique language and architecture and stuff like that. But they have that similar belief that they might be dying off. And then you have the hobbits who are known to have maybe like this idyllic lifestyle, but at the same time they're isolated and don't really know what's going on in the outside world. And then you just kind of pack all these cultures together and you have to kind of distinctly like, you know, separate the, every culture and see how they intermingle and it kind of creates a story. 
All right, so our last concept deals with social order and conflict in your story. So you've got the world, you've got the characters, but obviously not everyone is always going to get along. So you need to think about the fine details that are going to really move your story forward. Um, are there any types of religious or racial or interspecies conflicts or tension? Uh, is there a caste system in place? Is there any sort of political corruption? Uh, and what is the social order and how does it come into play? All these things are really important in just the overall world, but also in the conflict that your story will hopefully focus on. So we decided to focus on Desert Rising. So like, just to be brief, since we do have another presentation that goes deeply into this, there's just the idea of there's just this world, as far as we know, it's pretty isolated, but we have a northern territory, a southern territory, different cultures, in a way, different races that creates tension and conflict and just an idea of social order and if it's like imbalanced and such. And I do just want to make a point. Here's our sources, but I did briefly forgot to mention this in the intro. These ideas are ours. We didn't necessarily look things up, even though I'm sure this is reflected on a lot of different websites and people's opinions. But we just took a moment to decide what we thought it took to build a world in our own minds as writers. And kind of came up with this.